Let's go over the review packet for test one. Question number one, I want to list the next two terms in the sequence. I start by looking at the difference between the first two terms. And we can see that we have to add four to get to nine. Add four to nine to get to 13. And we're going to continuously add four to get to the next term. 25 plus 4 is 29, and 29 plus 4 is 33. Now, since we're having to add the same amount each time to get to the next term, this is going to be an arithmetic sequence. So make sure you write down arithmetic. And now, since this is an arithmetic sequence, we're going to have to find the expression for the nth term. And the formula for this is a sub n equals a1 plus the difference times n minus 1. Now, the common difference here is 4, so I know d is equal to 4. a sub 1 is our very first term. And that is a 5. Now we can plug everything into our formula. We have a sub n equals 5 plus 4 times n minus 1. a sub n is equal to. Now I have to distribute the 4. This gives me 4n minus 4. And we'll collect like terms, these two. a sub n is equal to 1 plus 4n. Question number 2. Let's look at the sequence and let's figure out how to get to the next term. It looks like 120 divided by 2 gives us 60. 60 divided by 2 gives us 30. And from 30 to 15, we also are dividing by 2. So that's the pattern. We're going to divide by 2 each time to get to the next term. 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. And 7.5 divided by 2 is 3.75. Since we're using the same number to divide to get to the next term, this is a geometric sequence. This is a geometric sequence. Recall, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So our ratio is 1 half. And the formula for a geometric sequence is a sub n equals a1 times r raised to the n minus 1. a sub 1 is our first term in our sequence. That's 120. So we have a sub n equals 120 times 1 half raised to the n minus 1. Now we'll double check our formula to make sure it works. If I plug in a 1, this becomes a 0. 1 half raised to the 0 is 1. You get 120. That's correct. If I plug in a 2, this becomes 2 minus 1, or just 1. And 1 half to the 1 is still 1 half. Times that by 120, you do get 60. So we can confirm that this is the correct formula for our sequence. Question number 3. I'm going to have to add 3 to get to 4 from 1. Add 5 to get to 9. Add 7 to get to 16. This looks like we have to add 9. And this looks like we have to add 11. So we're going to add odd numbers to the next terms to get the following terms. So for the next one, we're going to have to add 13. 36 plus 13 is going to give us 49, and then from that I have to add 15, that gives me 64. So use your 
guessing skills to figure out what the pattern is. It might take some time, but keep at it. You'll be able to figure out the pattern. This is neither geometric or arithmetic because we're adding different terms each time. So we don't need to find the formula for the nth term. Question number four, find the first five terms whose nth term is 3n times quantity n plus one. So we're just gonna use the formula to find the first five terms. I'm gonna start with n equals one. For n equals one, all I have to do is plug in a one for the n. We have three times one times 1 plus 1. This simplifies to 3 times 2, which is just 6. For n equals 2, we're going to have 3 times 2 times the quantity 2 plus 1, and that gives us 6 times 3, which is 18. n equals 3, we're going to plug in a 3 for n this time. And that gives me 9 times 4, and I know that's 36. n equals 4. I have 3 times 4 times the quantity, 4 plus 1. And that's just 12 times 5. I know that's 60 n equals 5, 3 times 5, times the quantity 5 plus 1, and that's 15 times 6. That gives me a 90. So the first five terms of this sequence is 6, 18, 36, 60, and 90. So this is the first five terms of that sequence. Question number five, we're gonna to have to figure the pattern of this shape. The first one is just a circle. Then the next one is a circle and then a square on the outside of it. Then we have a circle, square, then a circle, so I'm pretty sure the next pattern is going to be a circle, square, circle, and then we're going to have a square around that. So we're alternating from circles to squares. Now, I'm not judging your art skills. As long as it looks decent, we'll give you full credit. And we just need one figure in the sequence, so we're okay. Let's go to question number six. How many numbers are in this collection? 1, 4, 7, 11, all the way to 682. I'm going to determine if this is a geometric or arithmetic sequence. And if we look carefully, we notice that we have to add 3 to get to 4, add 3 to get to 7, add 3 to get to 10. So this is going to be an arithmetic sequence. This is an arithmetic sequence. Now to find what term this is, we're going to have to use the formula. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the common difference times n minus 1. a sub 1 is 1, that's our first term, and the common difference is 3. We'll plug it into the formula. a sub n equals 1 plus 3 times n minus 1. This gives us a sub n equals 1 plus, with distribution, I have 3n minus 3. So the formula is a sub n equals these two add together. After we collect like terms, we should have the formula a sub n equals 3n minus 2. And just to double check to make sure this formula is correct, let's plug in a 1, and we do get a 1. If we plug in a 2, 
3 times 2 is 6, 6 minus 2 is 4. So this is the correct formula for this sequence. Now to find what term this is, we'll plug in 682 for our a sub n. And then we'll solve for the position of that term. 682 equals 3 times n minus 2. Let's add 2 to both sides. I have 684 equals 3n, and we'll divide both sides by 3. Divide both sides by 3, and we have n equals 228, which means there are 228 numbers in this collection. Question number seven. We have two plus four plus six plus eight plus all the way to 48 plus 50. And I want to find the sum. Let's use Gauss's method. So let's suppose S is equal to two plus four plus six plus eight all the way to 48 plus 50. We'll rewrite it backwards. We have 50 plus 48 all the way down to 8, 6, 4, and 2. We'll add these two together. 2s is equal to 52. 2 plus 50 is 52. 4 plus 48 is 52. And you can see that all of these sums will be 52. Now the question is how many 52's are there. We can look for a pattern or we could use the same method we did in number 6. I'm gonna go with the pattern because it seems easier to me. The first number is a 2. The first term is a 2. The second term is a 4. The third term is a 6. And the fourth term is an 8. So how many numbers do we actually have? Well, there's a pattern. Think about the pattern for a moment and you'll be able to figure it out pretty quickly. It seems that all we have to do is divide 50 by 2, which is 25. So we know there are 25 of these 52s. 2s is equal to 25 times 52 now. I can divide both sides by 2 to find s. And our sum, s, is equal to 650. This is our solution. Our solution is 650. Question number 8. We want to find the sum, and again, we're well, going to use Gauss's method for this problem. So let's give it a try. Let's say S is equal to 6 plus 20 plus 34 all the way to 986. So we're going to write it backwards. S is equal to 986. Now what's the next number below 986? we'll have to look at the pattern. It appears that we're adding 14 to get to the next term in the sequence, so we'll have to subtract 14 to get to the next pattern below 986. And that is 972, and it's gonna go all the way down to 34, 20, then six. We could add the two rows together. I get 992. This is also 992. And that goes down all the way to the end. We do see a pattern. They're all 992s. Now for this question, we have to figure out how many terms there are. So 
If you can figure out the pattern for the number of terms, then go for it. But in this case, it's a little bit more difficult. I am probably going to have to find a formula for this sequence. a sub n equals 6 plus 14 times n minus 1. The first term is 6 and the common difference 14. Now let's plug in the 986 to a sub n after we simplify this formula. a sub n equals 6 plus 14n minus 14. a sub n equals 14n minus 8. This is our formula for the sequence and we can always check it to make sure it does work. If we plug in a 1, we do get 6. We plug in a 2, we do get 20. So this formula does work. Now I want to know how many numbers there are, so let's plug in 986 for a sub n. 986 equals 14n minus 8. Let's add 8 to both sides. I get 994 equals 14n. We'll divide both sides by 14. n equals 71. There are 71 numbers in our collection. And so I know there are 71 992s. 2s is equal to 71 times 992. And we can divide both sides by 2. So our solution is equal to 35,216. Question number 9. Find the first term of the arithmetic sequence whose difference is 7. That tells me d is equal to 7. And whose 13th term is 89. Alright, so let's figure out what this is. We know it's an arithmetic sequence, so we'll use the formula a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the common difference times n minus 1. I know the 13th term is 89, so for n equals 13, a sub n should be equal to 89. That is important information. Let's plug in the numbers. 89 equals the first term. We don't know what that is. That's what we're looking for. A sub 1 plus the common difference. We know that is 7. And they the 89 is our 13th term, so n equals 13. We can simplify this as 89 equals a sub 1 plus 13 minus 1 is just 12, so this is 7 times 12. 89 is equal to a sub 1 plus 84 now. Let's subtract 84 to both sides. And so, the first term in our sequence is 5. The first term in our sequence is 5. Question number 10, we're going to fill out this magic square. And so, I'll look at this diagonal and we'll figure out the sum. 17 plus 14 plus 11 is equal to... 42. So 42 is our magic number and just to double check we can divide this by 3 and we do get the middle number. So now we need to ensure that each column adds up to 42 and each row adds up to 42. 17 plus 10 plus what gives you 42? That number is going to be 15. We'll double check. 15 plus 16 plus 11 is 42. And this missing number has to be 18. That's the only way to add up to 42. And this missing number has to be 12. So this question isn't too difficult. You just have to make sure that each row and each column and each diagonal adds up to our 
magic number, in this case, 42. Question number 11. Al, Betty, Carl, and Dan were each born in different seasons. Al was born in February. Betty was not born in the fall. Carl was born in the spring. Determine which season each child was born. We'll start with the easiest person, and that was Carl. Carl was born in spring. Now, Al is born in February. February is considered winter. Now, we'll just have to figure out Betty and Dan. We know that Betty was not born in fall. That means... Dan must be born in fall. And there's only one option left, and that is summer. Betty must be born in summer. Question 12. We're going to again use the process of elimination. Let's try this question with a family tree. I know Jill is not Julie's sister. Therefore, Jill must be the mother. So that's one piece of information that we have. Jill must be the mother of Julie. And since Julie is the oldest sibling, she cannot be the mother. Therefore, she is going to be part of the siblings. So we'll put her down here. And we'll have to figure out who's the father, sister, and brother. Since there is only one female left, we know that Jenny must be Julie's sister. Now we have to figure out who's the brother and who's the father. Since James is older than Julie, he must be the father because Julie's the oldest sibling. So James must be the father. James, you are the father. And therefore the brother must be Jonathan. So here is our family tree. We have Julie is the oldest sibling. Jill is the mother. James is the father. Jenny is the younger sister. And Jonathan is the younger brother. Question number 13. There were ships with three masts and ships with four masts. At the Tall Ships Expedition Millie counted a total of 30 masts and 8 ships she saw. How many of these ships had 4 masts? Let's let x be equal to the number of ships with 3 masts. And we'll let y be equal to the number of ships with 4 masts. Now we do know that there's a total of 30 masts and there were 8 ships that she saw. So to do this question we'll have to create a equation. We know there's a total of 8 ships so I know x plus y has to add up to 8 because, because the number of 3 mass ships plus the number of 4 mass ships should give us 8 ships altogether. So that's our first equation. Our second equation is how do we calculate the number of mass? Well, I would take 3 and multiply it by x to find out how many mass all of the three mass ships would have together. And I would also have to multiply 4 by the number of four mass ships to find out the total mass for those ships. And so we know that the total is supposed to be equal to 30. And now we have a system of equations. 
Now I'm going to solve for y because I want to use substitution. So let's subtract x to both sides. This gives us y equals 8 minus x. Now I can plug this into the second equation. Now you don't have to use algebra. You can actually use guess and check for this question. It's really up to you. But just make sure you show your work if you're using guess and check. We have 3x plus 4 times the quantity 8 minus x equals 30. We can distribute the 4 to the right side here. So we have 3x plus 32 minus 4x equals 30. Negative x plus 32 equals 30. Subtract 32 to both sides. This simplifies to negative x equals negative 2. And I could divide both sides by negative 1. So x equals 2. This 2 represents the number of 3 mass ships. So we know there is a total of 2 3 mass ships. Now the question is, how many 4 mass ships do we have? Well, we have a total of eight ships, so we can deduce that it must be six ships that are four mass. That's our solution to the question. We know there's six ships with four mass. A farmer wants to fence in a rectangular field that is 50 feet long, 30 feet wide. He will use boards that are five feet long. If each end of the board is nailed to posts, how many posts are needed to fence in the field? For this one, the best way to do it is to draw a picture. For this question, we'll draw a picture and we'll figure out what the solution is. Now I know that this fence is 50 feet long by 30 feet long and each of the boards is 5 feet long. So how many boards do we need to cover this field? Well, I know there's going to be a post in each corner, so we'll start with that. And I need to cover 50 feet. So since there is a 5 feet long board and we need to cover 50 feet, we'll need 10 boards. So we have 1 board, 2 boards, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and this one will be the 10th board. Same thing on the bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now for the sides, it's 30 feet long so we know we need 6 boards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 six here. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 here. So each of these places that are marked here is considered a post. And if you count them all, you should get the solution for how many posts we need. Each of these posts are going to be separated by a 5 foot distance now. And you can double check to make sure that does add up to 50. And it does on the top and bottom. So how many posts do we need? And if you count them all together, I have 32 posts. We need 32 posts for this problem. 32 posts. Now if you have a different way to do this problem, feel free to do it your own way. Number 15, Rico noticed that if he began with his age, added 24, divided the result by 2, then subtracted 6, he got his age back. What is his age? For this question, you could use trial and error, guess and check, but I'm going to use algebra. For question number 15, I'm going to use algebra for this question. We know that if we add Rico's age with 24, then divide that result by 2, and then subtract 6 from it. We're supposed to get his age back, which we're going to call x. 
So we'll simplify this using algebra. Let's add 6 to both sides. x plus 24 divided by 2 equals x plus 6. Let's multiply both sides by 2. The 2 cancels out. We have x plus 24 equals 2x plus 12. That's from distribution. I'm going to subtract 12 to both sides. And let's also subtract x to both sides. This gives me x is equal to 12. And therefore, Rico is 12 years old. Rico is 12 years old. Question number 16. When Alec opened his math book, he found a page missing. If the sum of the two pages showing is 171, what are the missing page numbers? We could do this using algebra or we could do this using guess and check. So I know there is a page missing in my book, but I know the other side and the other side has to add up to 171. Well, if I call this page X, I need to skip two pages since we'll be missing two pages. The two pages that will be missing would be X plus 1 and X plus 2 since there's two sides to that page. So this must be X plus 3. So if you want to use a formula, you can say X plus X plus 3 equals 171. And you can use this to solve for the missing pages, or you could use guess and check. It's up to you. I'm going to use this formula because it looks easier to me. So we have that the x's and x's can be added together. So we have 2x plus 3 equals 171. Subtract a 3 to both sides. 2x equals 168. Divide both sides by 2, I get x equals 84. Well, that tells me what x is, but what's the two missing pages? The two missing pages are x plus 1 and x plus 2. Therefore, the missing pages is 84 plus 1, or 85, and 86. These are the two missing pages.